prediction welcome to 2023 please grab a notebook please take notes on your iphone notes you can do that if you're listening to this on youtube please follow me on tiktok that's where i break down charts for the world and follow me on instagram if you want to learn your chart on live and listen to current updates watch the stories thank you anyways if you're new here let's find out how do you find your birth chart so let's begin on that sense first you want to go to your this website astro seek you want to use the birth chart online calculator i like to use astro seek you can use whatever website you want i like to look at the entire chart for this purposes okay so when you get to this point right here you want to put in your birth information the per, the place you were born at so i was born in new york so i'm just gonna put new york if you do not have your time of birth that is okay click unknown for right now generate your calc your chart you're gonna get a picture just like this right so here's what you're gonna do you're gonna look at what is your sun sign is this symbol right here it looks like a sun with a dot in it or a circle with a dot whatever it's gonna be focused on the sign you the month you were born so if you're a capricorn and if you the degree will explain the day you were born so if it was the 10 degrees would be the first of january anyways you also want to take a look at where your moon resides if you do not have your time of birth or a range or when you were born it's going to give you for that day where it would have been for that specific day so for instance it would have been a libra anyways so that means you're going to know that your moon is in libra those are the two things you're going to listen to so when you listen to these readings you want to listen to your sun sign and you want to listen to your moon sign now, because you do not know your time of birth, you can't really use the moon sign, right? Like as much as the sun sign, unless you know the specific time. But here's what you want to know. If you are born in the day, let's say, for instance, you knew you were born in a day, use your sun sign. If you are a man, please use your sun sign. Um, okay, what else? Also, the sun sign will explain your external output. So things that happen in your career will be seen in the sun sign reading so when you listen to the sun sign it's going to describe to you more of your career things that you can externally view okay also this could be even your health for your sun sign for the moon sign it will be more internal so for women it's important for us to listen to our moon signs for changes in our moods also for women that or people that were born at night um, if you have, if you're a child or if you were still under your 30, so if you're in your 20s, definitely pay attention to your moon sign. It's more important. This will show you more home stuff, more internal battles and more personal relationships. So your friends and your, you know, immediate people, your family. Now for those that do have their time of birth, which means... You do have the time of birth. You're going to click unknown. Let's say you were born on 12 o'clock in the afternoon. Let's just say um, you want you want to put Placidus. Okay. Or if, for instance, you want to put Placidus first. One way to view your chart. Okay. It's going to show you that rising sign degree. If you know the exact time of birth, that means you looked at your birth certificate, not what your mom told you. Repeat. So for instance, let's say. You are in Aries. This will be more of the reading you will listen to. The rising sign, it will help you put together things that actually happen to your body, your direct moves, okay? Um, the actual events that are happening according to the sun. So whenever the sun focus on these houses, it will be more accurate of a reading. So those are the things that I want to inform you of. So this is your rising sign, your first house, your ascendant, your lagna, okay? Um, I hope that makes sense for everyone out there. Now, for also, this is another way to view your chart, which is called the whole signs. Thank you for listening. I hope you learned something from this part. Okay, so now that you have your whole sign, let's say you have your time of birth, you look at your sun sign degree, you look at your moon degree and then you look at your rising sign degree whichever is first you listen to first so if your rising sign is the largest degree listen to that first then look for instance the moon is the second largest you listen to that after and then your sun sign i hope that makes sense to the things that you've learned today thank you
important dates of 2023 so you might want to write these down put this in your calendar these are the important dates so starting off with saturn the planet of karma and time lord will be shifting signs after being three years in aquarius will be entering pisces march 7th and it will be there all the way to 2025 i believe up next you also want to jot down that when it goes retrograde, it will be June 17th through the November 4th of 2023. Then we're going to also experience when Jupiter enters Aries, which it already has in 2023. But in May 16th, Jupiter will end its transit in Aries and it will enter Taurus and it will be there for 2023. So May 16th. This is important. Jupiter, the planet of joy, the belief system, the um, the focus of the year, really, after the sun. This is the goal or the abundance or the opportunity of the year will be entering Taurus, May 16 to 2023. Around September 4th till the end of the year, it will go retrograde. Jupiter will enter retrograde in Taurus. Also, a notable date that you should also put down it is June 1st. So June 1st is an important date for um, a Jupiter and the North Node in Taurus at 2 degrees. So please pay attention to that. If you have um, this as a main player, as a main pillar, Taurus, Leo, Aquarius, and Scorpio. Okay, up next, we're going to have the eclipses, okay? Um, we're going to have four eclipses right down these days. One day will be April 20th. It will be an eclipse in Aries at 29 degrees. It is a new moon, okay? And Mars will be at in Cancer then, okay? So the next one will be a full moon on May 5th, and it will be at 14 degrees Scorpio, Okay, and it's a full moon, and Mars will be at 21 degrees. Uh, we have up in the middle of the year, it will be in October 14th, we'll have a 21 degrees Libra new moon eclipse, um, and Venus will be in Virgo, okay? Also, and we'll end the eclipses for 2023 in October 28th, uh, which will be a 5 degrees Taurus full moon eclipse. And Venus will be in Virgo. Also, notable mention will be in July 22. Well, excuse me. Uh, starting June 5th, excuse me, June 5th, we'll have Venus in Leo. And all the way to October 8th, Venus will remain in Leo, which is important. It's a very long transit for a personal planet or interpersonal, whatever. Um which is Venus rules relationship, money, desires, okay, women. So it's very important to know this. Also food. Um, Venus will also go retrograde July 22nd, okay, and it will stay retrograde till September 3rd of 2023. It will go retrograde at 28 degrees Leo. And um, let's see, when it enters back in September, it, I believe it will be, let's see, since I have you here, Venus will be all the way at 12 degrees Leo. It's important. So write down these degrees so you can also look for this in your natal chart. Another notable mention is a Pluto. It's not notable. It's very important. So in March 23 of 2023, Pluto will enter Aquarius and it will go to zero degrees all the way to May 1st. Okay, so on May 1st, Pluto will enter retrograde. Let's see what that will be, uh, 2023. And it'll still be at zero degrees, 21 minutes, uh, apparently. So let me just make sure. Let's put New York uh, because I am in New York. Thank you for watching. Hello. Duh. So yeah, May 1st, uh, if I'm not mistaken, let's just put May 2nd. Pluto will be retrograding back into Capricorn and it will be there actually June 11th. Okay. 
I will be actually in Capricorn for the rest of 2023, and it will go direct in October 10th at 27 degrees, which is an important degree. That is a Gemini degree. It will represent, and it will be shown in the mercurial things in life. And then Pluto will enter Aquarius officially January 20th, 2024, which happens to also be America's inauguration day. Interesting. Thank you for listening to this. Please write down those dates. Long overdue. Let's just get right into it. Sun, moon, and rising. We're going to do your career, money, and health, and then relationships towards the end. So let's get to it. First couple of things that you need to know for Aquarius, sun, moon, and rising Jupiter rules your finances, Mars rules your career, public image, the health is ruled by both Saturn's and the moon's transit, and your love life is ruled by both Saturn and the sun's transit. So we're going to get into that. The first hitter that you need to know is about Saturn. I want you to take a look at the date that I got on this right here. We got December 30th, 2023. And I want you to take a look at how Saturn is only up to three degrees. If you didn't know anything about astrology, there is 29 degrees. Saturn only got to three. Saturn rules you traditionally. It's in your second house. Now, what is the second house? The second house is your resources, your finances, stuff like that. Things that you own, like your clothes, um, your family, your face, your mouth. This is your self-worth. Those things will be targeted and be in focus of the next upcoming year. So uh, tons of events with your family, tons of events going on with your finances. Um, as well, Saturn also rules your 12th house of expenses, your spirituality, your projects that are creative projects is heading into the 12th house, which means that those of you that have been working on a project that needed merchandising, uh, advertising, some of them, um, you know, even like, uh, like things online because the 12th house is like a different dimension and that's basically what Saturn rules there, right? So while it's there, you're going to see it emphasize on this. It's going to oppose your Virgo house. So it's always going to bring up the need to save your money or invest your money, the need to um, study or learn more or research more because that is what Saturn does or when it's in the second house, it's still trying to find information, okay? At the end of the, uh, the, end of this transit, right, since it's only really felt by those born early February, excuse me, those born early, late February, early uh, Excuse me, late January, early February. Thank you. Um, yeah, those people are truly going to be the ones that feel it. And now Saturn is working on building your 11th house or the 11th sign away from you, sun, moon, and rising. What does that mean? So it's trying to gain you more money. It's trying to put yourself out there, work on a goal, achieving a goal. These are the people that are married into the family in law. So you're going to see them pop up more. Uh, connect with your friends, meet new friends by the end of this, you know? So uh, I wish that for you at Aquarius. So the Sagittarius house for even the sun, more money, getting a promotion, putting your name out there for the moon in Aquarius. This could be really cool goals that you can get, desires that you truly want. So I guess, you know, keep on working, Saturn, you know? Also, the co-ruler of you is Uranus in Tropical. Or the North Node in Vedic. So what's going on there? So Uranus has been in Taurus since 2018, which is actually the futuristic plans and the other, because you're always working on two things, Aquarius. So you could have been seeing this slowly unwind since 2018, this other project. And Uranus has been in the fourth house. So what's the project? Either getting your home, obtaining more assets, or you... Self emotionally development, or you uh, might have started working from home because of that, you know, or you developed a home. Some of you have a child now, a family. Look at you. Uh, wish that for you, love. <laughs> Anyways, uh, yeah, Uranus, it's been, it's more, Uranus is trying to help it stick. 
Now the North Node, since the last year, has been also in your fourth house. So it brought a lot of more intense and fast changes that kind of looked like they could have came in as quickly and left as quickly as they came in, if that makes any sense. So that's more like a fool's gold. Again, this is about your self-development. Some of you may have like started doing, like learning something and then walked away from that, you know? Um, some of you started doing a project and again, did the same thing. Friends that, you know, left. Or projects or things at home or situations in the family, like your mother could have gone through some changes like um, surgeries and uh, moving, okay, depending on however your Venus is at, by the way. So I hope that makes any sense to you, Aquarius. So those are the transits of Saturn and Uranus. Now let's look at those retrogrades so we can get a hand at all of that. So when Saturn goes retrograde, which will be June 17th to November 4th, that is happening again in your second house so it's gonna it can slow down the process you could feel a little bit more tired this could change your eating habits this could change situations within you you could feel not as confident as you, you did in the beginning so keep i want you to keep, remember those date and mind you this is happening excuse me this is happening during the summertime literally when the sun is transiting in your fifth going all the way to your 10th house so that's like a very like half of the year so if you want those are if you're trying to work on a project saturn depending on how you feel you should kind of see it right away in the early june if you start feeling yourself getting tired in may you want to make sure you you know preserve your energy set uh, aquarius so you can plan better so it could be, this could even start how, if you're a person that's an Aquarius that's single, and at that time maybe it slows down, when you may meet someone and it slows down and you have a, you know, a rendezvous, whatever, because it's happening in your fifth house and it's ending in your tenth house. And that's going to be, the that's around that time, is already on the other half of the horizon. So some of you may get in a relationship. Some of you may get into a new job around that time where a new cycle of things start around then, okay? Especially, again, early born, late born January people, uh, as well as the February early week. So you would also see those changes. Now, also Uranus is the other half of you. And is going to be going retrograde around August, which is again at the end of your the relationship and contract and business houses. For those of you, Uranus, especially those that are born after the of February twelfth, they would feel that. You guys specifically will feel that shift of Uranus. So these could be the things at home or been trying to move. You know, those are the people that are actually still working on things that happened to them or evolved. So I hope that makes any sense to you with the fourth house at home or yourself or something happens even at work. So keep that in mind. So those are Saturn and Uranus transits. Next, let's talk about Jupiter. It will go back to the nodes so I can put it all together for you. So Jupiter will be in two different signs. First, Jupiter is going to be in Aries, which will be three signs away from your sun, moon, or rising in Aquarius. The third sign away means speaking to your sibling, short driving more. Jupiter is the ruler of your second house of family and self-worth and the 11th house of friends and the goal. It's, hap it's in the third house, so you're taking the courage, you're taking the step forward, right? And mind you, I want you to pay attention to that Jupiter because it might introduce new ideas, new ventures, new hobbies, new skills, new something, associates, things on social media. And then when the North Node comes, you'll be really focused on that hobby or thing that pops up during now to May 16th. Okay, Jupiter in the third does great. It makes you learn something. It makes you want to go hang out with friends, speak my, speak your mind more. The third house is still, uh, you know, like a, in Vedic is a courage house. So again, this is where you step into the light. The third house is paperwork, signing your name onto, onto things, maybe obtaining 
more money and you're using that money for some other projects that you're handling depending on your own personal mars maybe you even start doing a new like hobby around the neighborhood you walk you go to the gym whatever the case may be you will see jupiter and aries having you outside more perhaps giving you more fun um, from here it's opening you up to the markets is making you speak more to your sibling to your uh, lover because it trines your seventh house and the eleventh house of friends, maybe your lover and you make moves, sign paperwork. This is, could be a time some people get married. So um, I've seen that. That could be a theme for you. Overall, this is a great time from now to May 16th. So shout out to that. Then Jupiter will go into Taurus in your fourth house, joining Uranus, joining the North Node in Taurus, in the fourth house of home, family self-development emotional development within you some of you had surgeries um situations like that it goes into your fourth house it's gonna bring your second house of finances and family and the 11th house of friends into your fourth house so some of you have family gatherings events and friends events at your home some of you have these projects that you now are really into at home buying you yourself new gadgets new phones new computers if you don't already have done that, some of you will be um, having, like I said, maybe new family members. Some of you are, get pregnant. Jupiter still could get you pregnant in the fourth house and makes you want to become a parent. So that could be a theme for some of you. Okay, Jupiter in there is joining that other hobby that you've been working on or slowly expanding on or creating. And it is going to be have you really focus on your career or your home some, for some of your Aquarius from May 16th all the way to the end of the year because Taurus is going to remain there. Now, it, it'll, it will go retrograde between September 4th to the, the end of the year, which is happening in your 8th house to the 11th house, uh, technically, which means that when Jupiter goes into retrograde, it can definitely change your um, finances. It could definitely change your... Uh, how much money's coming in, how much money you're spending out, because it's happening in the eighth house. Maybe you, the in-laws, maybe the in-laws come stay around that time, switch off, or some other family member that you don't necessarily see all the time that's married into the family or whatever the case may be. That could be some type of crisis that could change or happen in your family, because again, Jupiter does rule that and is in your fourth house. So I do want you to keep that in mind. Uh, another time that, you know, Things kind of slow down and unwind. Mind you, that is another period. Well, now Saturn and Jupiter is will be retrograde between September and November, both of them. So again, uh, always I always tell people when you know the sun is going to transit in your eighth house, save your money. Pay attention to your finances around then because, bitch, it will be having changes. I had a transit with Saturn in my eighth house and my best another friend of mine has Saturn in their second house. And me and him was very much involved into trading and investments. And me and him had our whole little setup where we would work on this. Um, and we kind of knew when we would be down because, I mean, obviously I had astrology. He was paying attention to the news and we kind of worked together on that way. So Aquarius work with a friend. Jupiter is that friend or someone you trust with finances, uh, you know. Excuse me. And then you might put things, you might have things add up together so later on, you know. So that's my best advice for you. Even if you're merging your finances with someone else, like a partner or something, uh, that could be a time maybe where you guys plan, maybe make big moves. You know, some of you do have to spend money in September because maybe you're moving then, whatever, or you, whatever the case may be going on in your own personal lives. So, yes, when Jupiter goes retrograde, that is a theme. And I also want to point out, Notable mention, Neptune will be going retrograde from the start of June 30th. So that's actually a preview of Jupiter's retrograde. So I do recommend you paying attention of, to that. Um, maybe a shift happens. Now, Neptune has been going in your second house, and Saturn is coming to clean up that house. Big facts. And that is why it's happening to, it happens to be this much. It feels very strenuous, or it, feel, it will feel like that. So... That is my conclusive for you and Jupiter uh, Aquarius. So good luck out there with Jupiter. Now, again, remember, it's building your 11th house and you got a three-year plan. So 
I don't need you to rush for this because remember, Jupiter and Saturn are together on a three-year plan. And Saturn and Pisces is about the Dharma, is about what you believe in. So if you make sure you have your mental in a right state of mind, and things will come to you in a different way, I hope. So anyways, that's the best way I can explain it. The Neptune will be felt those by those born um, in February 16, 17, 15, around there. You guys would feel that Neptune retrograde around June, so pay attention to that grades of mercury aquarius sun moon and rising listen to me i got you uh, mercury is the rulership of your fun and other people obviously in your chart so whenever mercury does go retrograde it does affect a little bit of fast money if you're into that like stocks or investments you know or your relationship your love life aquarius but this year we're gonna have a couple retrograde they're gonna be in earth signs I'm recording this one while in retrograde. Oh, we just got out of it. Thank God. So let's see what the second retrograde is looking like. So the second retrograde is happening in your fourth house. And then one is going to happen in your eighth house. And then again, back uh, from your 11th to your 12th. And the fourth house, let's start off there, which is going to be happening in April 21st to May 15th. This one is bringing in or the focus on maybe if you have children, you want to pay attention. This is like a blind spot in the house, changes in the home, your mother, your self-development. Okay, this might bring in uh, in-laws, other family to come see you because the Mercury is the eighth house ruler going into the fourth, right? So this is a blind spot to the kids. So or maybe you're spending more time at home. You walk away from like, um, you know, like certain things that are distracting you uh so just a you know food for thought from the children this could be a distractive time because of the blind spot sorry that's what i meant to say anyways the second retrograde will be happening around august 23rd to september 15th and that's going to be happening of relationship houses so this is again your partner's family contracts like stuff with money i know in aquarius i was waiting for her taxes for the longest um, or anything that re- requires loans or banking, that might take some time. Uh, it brings the fifth house into the eighth house. There might be some crisis going on with the children um, or your lover, you know, so it might be a theme around that time, okay? Then at the end of the year, it's going to be happening in your going into your 12th into your 11th. So this is a time there's more expenses because uh, the 12th house is getting active. It brings the fifth and the eighth into the 12th, so... So some of your children may have to go see family or they're far away or some of your in-laws are are throwing parties or events and you're going to it. I don't know, maybe because that's that time of the year, you know, and it's retrograding back into your 11th house. There might be situations with a friend of yours, depending on what's going on. Jupiter will be in the fourth house at that time and it'll be the ending, but uh, that cap, we just left the Capricorn 12th house. So it's kind of similar to now, except that it's bringing in the 11th house. So I guess that would be a thing to keep in mind. So I hope you keep that in the back of your head. Now let's talk about your relationship houses. So you have Leo, Leo, depending on the way your sun is structured in your own natal chart, whether you're a sun, moon, or rising in Aquarius, even if you're a sun in Aquarius and it does uh, uh, reflect about your associates, relationships with partners and friends. So one thing that it's definitely going to go down is pay attention to the retrogrades of Saturn that changes things up. And then the retrograde of Venus and Leo. So Venus and Leo is going to be there for a while, actually. It's going to be there for like four or five months. And then it's going to go retrograde between July 23rd to September 4th, which is going to be from here, from the summertime, July, a month before your partner, uh, the houses of relationships. So this is going to start changing your routine up all the way till the September 8th. So this could be like, this could be bringing in, again, Venus rules your fourth house of emotions, your home, and you've been getting a crazy big transits in there. It's going to bring in that Venus into the seventh house. And it's going to bring in the ninth house of status, traveling, grandma, grandparents, your father, court system into the seventh house. 
Okay, so when Venus is in the seventh house, it actually does really, really good. Even this is retrograde. Venus belongs in the seventh and the second. So when it's there, it could be bringing you into resources that you need, signing a contract for your maybe housing or leveling up of status of career um, or some type of a journey that you take around that time, whether it's career or with even your family. Um, moon and Aquarius, this could also be from people that you know in your life. So depending on how your Taurus and Libra house, the moon and Aquarius looks like, it'll be bringing it into there. So maybe this is a time, sometimes it'll be more emotional for you. So you might not be there for someone else emotionally, you know, things to keep in mind. So relationship wise, like I said, if you don't get married early on in the year, in the second half of the year, it looks like you guys would be moving in or getting closer to your partner in some shape or form. A Saturn has been trying to get you all settled into your own stuff in your own life, Aquarius, which is long overdue. So it's coming. Okay. Then the other thing that's going to be going down is the nodal switches. The nodals also rules you as a personality, who you are as a person, sun and identity, part of your career or your moon. This is part of some of you, how your emotions fluctuate. So the north node has been in your fourth house and 10th house eclipsing, right? So that's been changing your home, your living situation, your emotional development has changed your careers by now since last year. You've had different business ventures, a career ventures. You've changed your look. This could have caused surgeries in your life from different sources, whatever, right? You could have been choosing to create something of your own a lot because, again, we're going into a Pluto and Aquarius for 20 years. So it makes sense that you would have a lots of transits in your fourth house. You are creating or starting a new journey, family, something, right? The fourth house, it's like having your own baby or being a parent to something, so I hope that makes sense to you. Now the nodes are switching into your third house and ninth house, which sun, moon, and rising. They're going to be three signs away from you no matter what, which is going to make you focus on things like social media, your siblings, learning a skill set, something that you started in while Jupiter was in Aries between the early half of the year all the way to May 16. You could be expanding on this. Your mouth becomes sharper. You might change phones. You know, you get rid of your old name status. K2 is in the ninth house of status. Some of you need to check up on a grandparent. Some of you have to travel for religious purposes or travel some type of place for something karmic, you know, depending on how your Venus is set up in your own natal charts, right? The nodes will be having this effect um, somehow. You will be seeing this. It'll change. You'll be learning some new things that you want to step into. Uh, I hope that makes sense. You know, K2 in the ninth house, like I said, some type of name or status could be getting rid of uh, for some of you, okay? Mm, or even supervisors may leave, whatever. Some of you have been changing jobs all the time. So these nodes really affect your how your mind works because Saturn is the traditional route while the North Node makes you think outside of the box, which is what you are anyways. So next, don't be afraid of the eclipses. The eclipses is for you, Aquarius, to make your life better. I'm sorry that it took this long. Retrogrades, hang in there. Also, I will be updating this continuously throughout the year on Patreon. If you follow me there, you know what I'm talking about. Anyways, let's get started. So first thing I want you to notice is look at the date that I got here. It's December 30th, 2023, which is the last day of 2023. Notice how Saturn, our time Lord, is at three degrees. There's 30 degrees in the zodiac wheel. So look how slow he really moves. Now, Saturn is the ruler for you, sun, moon, and rising in Pisces of your 11th house of goals, opportunities uh, that you're trying to achieve, friendships, your elder siblings, the 12th house of dreams and your habits and your subconscious mind and your creative ventures, right? It's coming into the first house, which means you're trying to get a hold of them. You're trying to achieve them. You're trying to get them. They're going to be a priority to you to achieve that goal, to get these things done, to handle these habits. Okay. So Saturn being in the first house, kind of a lot of pressure. It's going to hit all of your cart, excuse me, your main pillars of your chart from there it's gonna actually build your 10th house actually saturn and pisces is trying to help you c 
create your public image, change the way you look physically for some of you rising in sun and Pisces that want to go through surgeries and change your look. Some of you are trying to get a title, a career of some sort that you're slowly developing. Of course, all depends on the Jupiter natally in your own natal charts, but Sagittarius Saturn for these next three years is trying to build your Sag. It's trying to get Sagittarius all get gathered and together um, and organized. That's really what it does. So be assured of that. Now, Saturn in here will oppose your seventh house of partnerships, connections, uh, like associates, your business, if you're in a business, it will help you get ranked up if you're trying to sign a contract with the government. Saturn is the government. So some of you have to, in order for you to get, earn your freedom, you must do your time. For some of you, uh, Pisces, Sun, Moon, and Rising, some of you have to do some time. Upcoming year. Some of you have to... Uh, really focus on what would you what you want to do as a career or business or some of you have all the pressure on you basically you're the head of the household because you're moving again it's going to hit all of your main pillars the home your living situation your family will have some changes overall um, a lot of responsibility on you physically mentally okay so some of you would have to pay attention more to your partners or your family Okay, some of you have to pay attention to your career. Some people may not be a, a really fond of your attitude. Your personality is asking for you to be a little bit more graceful, for you to show a more determined and a focused side of you. Okay, so that is what Saturn is coming up with. Now, I want you to notice the retrogrades. Let's talk about that. Saturn will be going retrograde between June 17th to November 4th. With For you, it'll be having happening when the sun is transiting in the fourth house, which is changes in your home and family. So it'll start then around June all the way to November. That is about one, two, three, four, five, six months overall. Literally the entire time that the sun is transiting on the other half of your horizon, which involves other people like your children, like your routines, like your job. This is important because Saturn could change the flow of your gains, your interactions. Some of you been having weird really friendship shit. Trust me, because I have a friend who's a Pisces and she has this weird go back and forth um, with friends. And what goals she wants to focus on, you know? Some of you are venturing into different markets, you know, like different social media, something creative, something spiritual, something that you're, you are the 12th house, something that feels just right for you, okay? So when Saturn goes in retrograde, it can change the momentum. So depending on you, retrogrades do better. So if you have retrograde planets, Pisces, you will do better or that planet will do better in retrograde. Or if you have a Saturn direct and you may have to slow down and take some breaths. So depending on literally how your Saturn is Pisces, okay? Then up next, so for the, you're going to see it slowly again at all Pisces. But what you will see is the transits of Jupiter. It's going to go from two different placements. It's going to go from your second into your first. So the second house is Aries. Aries is your second house of money. Let's talk about that. Finances. Mars determines how your money fluctuates. Okay, so the transits of Mars. Mars won't be retrograde anymore for the rest of the year, thank God. But Venus will be, which we will talk about it. Okay, so Mars definitely changes your status and stuff with your name on it, plus your finances. Jupiter coming in there, your focus on your stuff. Whether it's organizing it, buying yourself more stuff. Excuse me, upgrading your things that you own. The second thing, second house is things that you own, like your clothes, jewelry. Jupiter is trying to expand this, so you're really focused on it. You're trying to get more of it. You know, this could be an investigated thing, too. Second house, Jupiter is opposing the eighth house. There might be research being done on you. I actually went into deeper uh, analysis because Pisces, duh. Uh, you are the thing of the year, so... I will be adding this on to Patreon, more details on what Jupiter and Aries can do. So I hope that makes sense. It'll, you know, for those that are trying to figure that out. Um, then Jupiter goes into your third house, which you will start getting more courageous. So the difference is when is in your second house, it'll try in your firehouses. So you'll have more hours. You have, you want to organize your, you're better at time management. You are speaking more to your boss. You're getting closer to them. 
um, career wise. So yeah, this could be also you speaking up more and being seen more. Your look changes when it's a fire sign, but when it goes into an earth sign, you're more communicative. You're more talking. Some of you need to get a new phone, new gadgets. Okay. Some of you, Jupiter in the North, Jupiter will be joining the Uranus and the North node that's been there for a while. Now, Uranus has been there since 2018, showing you different changes in your third house with siblings, communication, social media, different like projects that you may be into creatively or with your hand um, or traveling more right since 2018. For some of you, Pisces got a new car by then, um, new, you know, social media pot lit, whatever. Um, some of you moved out of your mother's house. Some of you. The North Node was this, you know, corrupted eclipse that comes. And it's kind of like a fool's goal. It doesn't really stay there for long. It brought you some expenses, things from the past, or like a sneaky thing that you do. Because the North Node in Uranus really represents the Aquarius house, which is the 12th house, which is your spiritual creativeness. This could have been you working out more, working on you anyways, or what you need to do for you. Uh, because the Pisces 12 houses still represents you in a way. So some of you could have been working out more. That may not happen. You know, whatever. So some of you tried Reiki and then walked away from it. Those are what the, what, that's what I mean about fool's goal. They kind of, you started and then you kind of walk away from it. So I hope that kind of makes sense for you, what Jupiter will be doing. So now retrograde is, let's look at that. Jupiter will go retrograde. That definitely affects you a lot. Um, Pisces, because Pisces, Jupiter rules you as the self, your career, if you're a sun in Pisces, your personal family, if you're a moon in Pisces, or your physical health, if you're a Pisces rising. So these kind of change that up for you a lot, actually. So I hope that makes sense. Um, yeah, so when Jupiter goes into retrograde, which it will September 4th, all the way to the end of the year, which is the be when the sun is transiting seven signs away from you, it'll change contracts. It'll change your interactions with your partner. Again, relationships change whenever transits of Jupiter and Mercury retrograde changes. So keep that in mind. So Jupiter going retrograde will affect you somehow in decisions that you make. This will be affecting the momentum. And if you notice Saturn and Jupiter are retrograding at the same time together for a little bit, which will be for like two months, if you notice, because Saturn will come out in three, like two months after Jupiter goes into retrograde. So October, November, kind of tough times. Things, they are not as fast because most of the retrogrades are happening then. So plan for that. Okay. Um, I hope that makes sense for you, uh, Pisces. Anyways, let's up next. Relationships, now that I got you here, okay? I'm sorry. Um, let's see. Okay, so relationship-wise, Pisces, we have Mercury uh, as the ruler of your relationships. Look, Mercury rules your home, your self-development, your inner world, plus it also rules your relationship so when retrogrades happen it does change the mood in the house and your interactions with your partners okay so if i go look right mercury if we look at the mercury retrograde they're all happening in your earth signs it's going to be happening in your taurus house which is the third house of communication that's the very first uh, mercury retrograde coming up which will be happening between april 21st to may 15th and that'll be changing That'll be bringing the Mercury in, in your fourth into the third and Mercury in your seventh, in the seventh house and the fourth house into the third. So it's a blind spot to your home, your emotional self, things with your mother, your family, even siblings, social media, things can change. Contracts can change because the contract is coming into the third house of writing. So something may have to be changed around that time. Uh, some sort of thing or even conversations that need to be having around that time. Might be a theme, so hope that makes sense. Then we're going to have Mercury retrograding in your Virgo house, which will be happening then around August 23rd to September 15th. And it'll be a couple of retrogrades around that time, so hang in there. And that'll be pretty heavy, and it's happening in the seventh house. So these are people you know. Um, these are your connections. It's bringing your fourth house into your seventh house. So now this could be situations at home. Some of you may have to move. 
again or somebody moves into your home, depending on what kind of situation is going on with you, Pisces, obviously, whatever's going on, Mercury. Or this could be your fourth house ruler coming to the seventh. Maybe your partner has a career change or a, you know, starts a new job or you, they come to the house to see you or you go see them, whatever the case may be, something with homes, things that you own or your inner world coming into the seventh house. Maybe a, you're emotional because of some type of relationship in your life, some type of contract that needs to get done or finished, whatever the case may be to you, Pisces. Um, don't worry, we will keep updating you when more things come into fruition. Okay. So I hope that makes sense, okay? Let's talk about the nodal switches. So we're doing uh, the north node has been in your third and your ninth house, Pisces. The node, the Rahu more in your third. So it expanded that area while you let go of the ninth house. So the ninth house is status. You've let go of maybe family members in your life. Your what you your construct of life and how life should be. You changed that whole love. Like if you thought you were supposed to be marrying and you know. Becoming a wife, now you change that you want to be a rock star. Who knows, right? Now, the third house shook things up for you. Maybe brought you into astrology more. Maybe brought you into social media more. Um, some type of market that it opened up for you some more. Thank goodness. Then, um, with the node switching, it'll go into your second and the eighth, which... <laughs> That'll be switching things up for you if you've been trying to obtain more assets, buy more things. That's good. More money should fluctuate in a quicker form for, from you, for you, uh, Pisces. There's going to be opportunities for you to get more money, opportunities to hang out more with your family. It brings the 12th house ruler into the second um, maybe you spending more money on you or the, like I said, it's going on trips or buying you these big expensive things that you may need or, uh, the South node into your eighth house will be letting go of some problems that you no longer have. You don't need the stress or the, some toxic energy in your life. Like I know an Aries who was dating someone toxic for a very long time and the eclipse came and took that person right out. As well as changes to your in-laws. So if you're married, Pisces, there's definitely going to be stuff going on. Or even if you're not married, you got, you know, children with this person. Their family is going to be going through some changes in their life. Your step family, um, even some friends of yours could be going through some stuff this year. Which will, which will change your concept of your self-worth. Also, you're getting your teeth checked. Your food intake. Be careful. Um, having to be there for your family in an emergency. Uh, so, you know, things like that. Just want to let you know, the Rahu could be a little bit shaking things up. So it could be a little bit more than expected. So keep that in mind. For you, and I just found a gray hair. Sorry, I got a little upset about that. Anyways, yes, the nodal changes will be happening around July 21st. And you'll see some changes going on even on coming up in October, which is interesting because Venus will be in Leo for a very long time in your sixth house. Venus is the ruler of your third house of communications, even job changes. It will bring the third house ruler into the sixth for the sun, moon, and rising. So even for you, health, body changes, um, time off from work, um, things with your pets, like, you know, retrograde in here. It's kind of intense, depending on your sun. If you're not a sun in Pisces and you're whatever. So it'll give you more flavors. You could figure it out. Like wherever your sun is at, sun in Pisces. Like let's say you're not a Pisces rising and your sun is in the fourth house. It'll bring that sprinkle in there, okay? Um, with fourth house things, whatever. Let's say your sun is in the, tw in the 12th house. You are a Pisces rising. It's going to bring the 12th house in here. You're... You may, your job may tell you to be more at home or your job is that different market. So whatever the case may be, it also brings in your eighth house ruler into the sixth, which is a crisis getting solved or a transformation that you need to pay attention to. It becomes a priority is in your daily. Again, this retrograde does happen between July 23rd to September 4th, which is literally when the sun is transiting from your fifth into the sixth was our kind of the hearts transit. So I do recommend getting some rest for sun, moon, and rising. 
um, and put those dates around your calendar so that may you know that way you're not uh, not uh, not aware of it. Okay. I hope this makes sense. I will keep updating you throughout the year. You know this. Hello. Uh, uh, uh. Watch me on Instagram lives. <laughs> I'm always telling you the uh, daily transits every Monday. Pisces every Monday.